literally breaking the number one rule of filmmaking. Don't wear white. Who cares? We cut that out. The people don't care about this crap. The obsessive TP. All right, guys, welcome back to the obsessive DP. Today we're doing something a little bit different. A little bit different. This is the start of a series of videos criti critiquing? critiquing other YouTubers' videos. Now, I don't want to be this arrogant guy that goes through other people's videos and tells them what they did wrong because I know all the right things to do. I don't know all the right things to do. I'm learning as much as the other guy, but I think it could be beneficial to go through other videos and say, this is what they did right, this is what they did wrong, this is how you can make it look better, this is what I would have done to make this look different and better and higher quality and higher grade because that's what we're all about here at the obsessive DP how can we make cinematic high quality visuals that you see in modern TV shows modern movies with big rigs big lights we're not gonna talk about LEDs that much here and we're not gonna talk about DSLRs that much on this channel that's not what we're into those things do not make high quality visuals always gonna check at least once to see if the camera's rolling it's rolling dopage all right, let's just kick this off. This is a video by, this is by Austin Paul. Great guy, tons of subscribers, tons of views on this video. It is create a cinematic product video using your TV. Super cool idea. It's, it's super clever. I like the idea. I think it has its flaws, but let's get into that after we kind of watch the video a little bit. All right, so I decided to use my TV to create a product video that looks like this. Good job, Austin. I would say off the top, here's a few things. One, look at this setup. Look at these blinds. Look at all the light leak coming through. You're actually seeing this in the final product. It's not a clean studio set. My mic wasn't on that whole time. Come on. What I was saying is you're actually having a lot of light leak here that you don't even realize. If you would walk into like a psych stage or professional studio, all the windows are completely blocked off. So no ambient light or any kind of light pollution is filling in your set because you want to be able to make those brush strokes with your own lights. You don't want to walk in and use house lights or use window light when you're lighting a studio environment. So you can already see there's blinds on this TV. I'm not sure if the blinds in the TV ever make it into the final product. First off, these reds are completely different. It looks too blue. It looks, see this, this white cap looks blue. So it looks like the Kelvin was off on camera. So it actually had, they had different white points. The white point of the Pringles can and the white point of the TV. TV. Here the red on the TV looks pretty good. It's really saturated, but it looks about right. But the cam the actual can is lit too low and it's too blue. So I'm not sure what Kelvin he was working on with this camera, but clearly the TV has a different Kelvin and it doesn't match at all. And it's not lit enough on the can. I'm not sure if he tried to dim the TV. If you dim the TV, this shot would have looked better. But let's continue. What I do like here is this line. I'm not sure how he made this line actually. I don't know if that was purposeful or not, but there's a nice line in the can which kind of just shows the shape of it. It, it, it tells you what it looks like. It's a nice specular. I, I, I like lines in products. I think they look good. Reflective products having this light line in it looks nice. This green color doesn't look right for me. It looks completely different than this. It doesn't look like it's in the same family of colors. I mean, what's sad about a TV is you just, you do get these edges. These edges are darker and that's just how TVs are. Unless you get like a $8,000 TV, you're going to have darker edges because there's dimming zones in a TV. It's not like a clean wall of RGBs that has like zones and the corners aren't as bright as the middle. And there's a whole thing to go through. I think this orange looks really good. I think that the can is lit enough. It doesn't look blue. The orange fits super well. It looks like the shadowed orange. This is a great frame. Purple looks a little off for me. I think it's, again, it's too bright in the background. I like this line. This here, I'm pretty sure is his blinds. So this is where you're getting that ambient light leak. It's working, but it's not really manicured. I think he could have manicured it better. Again, not lit enough here on this, on this can. This is pink. This is turning pink now. And then this is just, there's no light on it. I, I don't know if it's just ambient light or whatever, but it's not enough. It doesn't look right. 
there's kind of an edge here which is good but it could have been better this could have looked better this shot's super cool um a thing that you're gonna notice here is the light on the chips doesn't feel correct see how it's darker here it's it's being lit from the bottom and then the top i'm not actually sure it's being lit awkwardly you think that it would just be lit from the top and it does it just doesn't feel right something's wrong about the lights i'm actually not even sure what it is but it's see how it's super dark here you think there'd be a key light right there shining right into this part but there's not it's actually getting darker again here this side is his blinds in the room the ambient light leak is leaking onto the product shot which is not what you want you always want to block those off and you want to use your own lights so you can manicure it perfectly what i find interesting is every can has a different lighting i'm not sure if that was purposeful this one's obviously brighter i'm assuming it was brighter in the day i'm assuming it was a time of day is my kelvin right i'm like this is yellow so i don't know why uh, I don't know why, but my shirt looks yellow. Maybe I just didn't wash it right. We're at 5600K. Oh, there's actually orange coming from my monitor right now. Who cares? Cut that out. The people don't care about this crap. Again, we're looking at this can, how they're lit differently throughout the day. This looks like it was maybe high noon or a time of day where the sun was pounding that window. Could have been in the afternoon, could have been in the morning. Depends on the trajectory of the sun and where his house is facing. Obviously, totally different light now. It's coming from this side. I actually don't know why that would be the case. I don't know why the window light wouldn't be here unless it's like super late. This actually might be it right here but there's a line on this side now. Okay, this is way too dark. This Pringles can compared to this. Now there's a way in post, maybe in DaVinci, you could have brought this green down, manicured the color pretty well because it's pretty much the same tone and you could have brought it down, brought the can up, but it's just off. Maybe all the cans were set up different days or maybe there was different brightness or just the sun hitting that window, changing the light. Something was changing a lot in the spot and it doesn't look as clean and as good as it could have if we had more light in the can here it's obviously down it's way too dark compared to the rest of the scene again here down too dark this looks good this is a great hero shot great line it's probably that window i like the line here too i think it looks really nice not the best can this line <laughs> That's just the way they printed the can. I think it looks good. It really draws me to the specular and this, and the background's about the right color. This is a tiny bit down. This looks good, and this looks great. I think this, this is probably the best frame of the spot, actually. These are fun, these little things. I don't really have anything to say here, but again, you see that window light in almost every shot. It's that window light that was not manicured. It's not a production light. It's just a window that's actually casting a lot of light into the scene and he may have not realized it. Things like this I didn't realize back in the day. Maybe even just two years ago. I thought, when did this light die? <sighs> Who cares? No, I do. St I did stuff like this all the time. I probably still do it now if I'm doing too many jobs on set. That's what's so important about being an obsessive DP is doing one thing just focusing on one thing which is everything that's in the frame whether it be lighting lensing camera movement etc you're looking at the frame and you are the god of that frame and you have to manicure it and you have to look at every corner and you have to just own it as dps that is what you do here just different lighting i think it was using that overhead china ball so obviously this is lit more and then it falls off in the edges this is darker this is darker it's a good spot like i think that using this tv is a brilliant idea i really do i think it has its flaws i would never use this in a production scenario what i would use is i would use a full diffusion whatever frame i need for the scene four by six by eight by twelve by i would use full diffusion and then shoot however many sky panels i need to into it and i can dial in any color and any brightness and it's going to be spot on thing with the tv is that it's very limited it does not have high cri it's not going to give you the exact color and the exact dim that you need with the sky panel you can dim it to whatever your scene needs so it's not brighter than the product which it is several times in the spot and it's the exact color and that's all you have to worry about it's definitely a better option but this is a fun you know indie option again the window is huge in frame look at it it's reflecting off here it's really lighting a lot of things in the frame that maybe he didn't even realize again this is the one I said that was way too down. It still looks way too down. That window is gone. I'm assuming he shot this at night. Okay, let's see. Aperture and ISO. See if those are different. 
from what I'm thinking here is he shot all these at the same aperture, same ISO, and totally different times of the day. So that window light changed dramatically throughout the day. I can't tell you exactly when it was brightest because we don't know where the house was facing and the trajectory of the sun that day. But those are things you can look up on Google Earth. Super helpful. Oh, that's a pull. Oh, so he used the polarizer to change the brightness of the background. That's kind of smart. That's kind of smart. If, if he didn't want to dim the TV the whole day, he could actually manicure the polarizer and that changed the brightness of the TV. That was a good idea. I feel like this is just the normal result if you're not using false color. I probably would do this as well if I didn't have false color installed on my monitor and I wasn't meticulously, obsessively looking at everything in frame. If he used false color while filming this, he could have made sure the TV was exactly the same IRE value throughout the entire day. And that would have made this spot way better. Great idea with the drill, super clever, love it. Okay, look at the window now. It's just dark. That's a big factor. The sun completely changed there. Super clever with the shish kebab here. But some, something is off about this lighting. Let's see, how did he do it? Did he do it straight up and down? So it does look like he did it exactly how he lit everything else, but something is off. I, I, I wish I could see the whole BTS and the whole editing workflow to see if I could spot why this looks wrong, but it just looks wrong. I think that he needed a key light from the camera side. I think he just used an overhead light. That's why this is so dark and it feel, it doesn't feel right to have this so dark. Love this island shot. Okay, here's where he got his line from. Remember the line I was talking about in the can? Looks like he has this LED stick here. It's good stuff, love it. Again, two down, I know we talked about this, way too red. Because this is so pink red, your eye just immediately goes there and you're not even looking at the product. He, he helped in post, obviously brought up the can, but now this is like a pink. It's just not the right color and it's not the right brightness. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing here, he did not use false color while filming. Having false color on a camera, you can hit a button. I have it installed to F2, I hit F2, boom. I immediately know exact brightness of every single thing in frame, face, skin tone, product, background, edge, everything. I know the value and I, I know if it's been consistent or if it's changed. And then you can change it while you're filming it because I think a lot of these mistakes could have been fixed in post, but if you're not filming raw and you don't have a huge bit rate, maybe not because even a powerful program like DaVinci Resolve has its limits when you're not dealing with big file sizes like raw. Hope this was helpful. I hope you guys learned a lot here. Comment down below if you want me to critique any other videos. Again, this is not me being arrogant. I'm not just trying to review other people and say I could do this better because I have my flaws. I'm clearly not DPing Academy Award winning feature films. So I'm learning too. Please like and subscribe, check out Austin's videos and stay obsessed.